Is it still possible to game on a 6 year old graphics card released back in 2014? The GTX 970 has been a great budget pick for many years now, but how does it hold up in 2020? Another great budget pick is the GTX 1060, but is it still worth it? Well, since I own them both, I figured let's see how this card handles some of the most popular games, and to make things a bit more interesting, I figured why not also benchmark the 5500 XT and the 1660 Ti as well which are two very popular budget picks that was introduced on the market quite recently. With that said, yeah guys, we got a ton of benchmarks to go through. In case you're new to this channel, hey my name is Rob and I cover PC builds, but I also benchmark GPUs and I also cover a lot of hot uh, upcoming PC hardware. And so if you're interested in that, you definitely want to subscribe and you want to hit the notification bell so that you never miss an episode. Now let's say you're on hunt for a new graphics card but you don't want to empty your bank account. Especially now is a bad time to pay full price for a GPU knowing that both Nvidia and AMD both are planning to drop a whole new lineup of uh, graphics cards in September. It may seem like a bad idea to go buy a brand new graphics card right before that. If your budget is tight, my answer is you want to have a look at the used market. Our two very hot picks for years is the 970 and the 1060. Which one of these cards should you pick then? Well to answer that we need to fire up some games and see how they hold up. Before we do that let's quick Quickly have a look at the GPUs in question to get a better idea what we're working with. First up we got the 970, released in 2014. The 970 is Nvidia's final upper mid-range GPU tier to support SLI. Based on the GM104 GPU, the 970 is famous for the 3.5GB <laughs> memory meme. Now though the card is equipped with 4GB of GDDR5 memory, the way that the GPU is designed, only 3.5 is operating in full speed, or the last 500 megabytes is a lot slower and this has an impact on the performance, however it shouldn't be seen as a deal breaker. Now because so many people bought the 970, there should be plenty of these cards out on the market, making it the perfect pick if you want to snag a graphics card fairly cheap. Anyway, this particular card comes with MSI's popular twin frozer cooler. Next up we got the GTX 1060, now this particular card comes from a VGA and uh, as you can see it's equipped with just a single fan which unfortunately makes it pretty noisy but that said, this is far from the only 1060 available. Thanks to the popularity you should not have much problem finding a 2 fan card. Yeah anyway on the upside because this card is so cheap it fits in pretty much any case out there which is always a small advantage if you get what I mean. For the system I'm running the testing on I ended up picking the 3900X simply because I didn't want uh, the CPU to interfere with the numbers. I could have picked the much cheaper brand new 4 core 3300X I included in a PC build just a few weeks ago but I figured not too many of you guys own this CPU so it didn't make too much sense. Now I am however planning on including other CPUs for these lower end or mid range GPU benchmarks in the future. Just keep in mind guys I don't own every CPU available on the market but thank you for giving me suggestions in the comments I always appreciate all feedback you guys are giving me. And with that said yes yeah, I'm running 16 gigabytes of RAM from Corsair clocked at 3200 and the games are running off of a 7200 RPM hard drive. Alright so time for some gaming benchmarks. I started with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a game that is known for being not only GPU heavy but also put quite a lot of strain on the processor side. Running the game maxed out we can see this is clearly a struggle for the 970 while the 1060 on the other hand actually didn't perform that bad considering how the the benchmarking session in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is. Now what's interesting here is that even the $270 1660Ti is unable to reach a satisfying frame rate. Yeah this basically tells us guys that this game is very very demanding. Battlefield 5 is next up and both cards are doing fairly well here especially the 1060. 4 gigs of VRAM is definitely an issue here and this is something worth having in mind. Moving on to control again both cards are doing pretty good here. Keep in mind all games are running in 1080p maxed out so seeing the 1060 performing almost as good as the 5500 XT from the red team released in 2019. We're starting to realize how good the 1060 still holds up in 2020. Now for the 970 I recommend dropping the settings here quite a bit and you should see numbers near the magic 60 FPS mark. Next up we got Far Cry New Dawn and as we can see there is no problem reaching 
around 60 fps for this game moving on to gears 5 things get a slight bit shaky here for the 970 but if you're not too picky yeah dropping the settings down to medium should leave you more than happy here as well metro exodus is another game that is known for being very demanding and as we can see for a six year old 970 still managing to reach almost 40 fps on average is with all things considered pretty good the 1060 is again hovering around the same numbers as the 5500 xt so again we get another reminder that there's still plenty of performance left in the 1060 jumping over to shadow of the tomb raider cn the 1060 doing better here start against the 5500 xt was pretty unexpected i'm not gonna lie next up we got division 2 and the 970 is struggling pretty hard here so i recommend dropping the settings down to medium here and i should leave you at 60 fps on average another interesting takeaway is how well the 5500 xt does in this game clearly showing off his muscles versus the og cards for the first time last up guys we got world war Z, and as we can see all four gpus pass this game without any issues which tells me that you shouldn't have to spend that much money on the gpu to reach a satisfying fps in this game now to summarize the testing guys i would say opting for medium for the 970 and medium to high settings for the 1060 should keep you above that 60 fps target fairly easy but the most important takeaway here is that both these cards still holds up in 2020 if you're able to snag one of these fairly cheap i definitely say yeah go for it and that kind of brings us over to pricing and where the market is right now pricing is <laughs> very important because it wouldn't make much sense picking up a used 970 for 250 bucks knowing that you can get a new 1660 ti for that kind of budget luckily that is not the case and after scattering the used market the 970 seems to go for around 105 and 110 dollars while the 1060 can be found for just a few dollars more but comparing that to a new 5500 xtu sits at 160 to 180 and 1660 ti selling for 260 to 280 we can see that there is just so much value in these older cards it is important to understand that yes we do give up warranty but these 50 bucks you're saving by picking up a 1060 card instead of a 5500 xt for 160 bucks the reality is you're almost getting as much performance from a 1060 which is a pretty good deal in my opinion now if you're choosing between the 970 and the 1060 i would highly argue that the few extra dollars you might have to spend for the 1060 is definitely worth it considering the 970 only having 3.5 gigabytes of high speed memory just running around in gears 5 at ultra settings has the 970 very very low on memory and knowing that more and more games are and needing more vram these days well from that point of view the obvious winner would be the 6 gigabyte equipped 1060 because of the extra vram which is ultimately in my opinion today's big winner now what do you think about the 1060 which card is the ultimate budget gpu in your opinion is there something i could have done better i'm very curious to hear what you think about this and share your opinions down below in the meantime guys watch either of these two videos and i will see you guys in the next video